When you're satisfied that you've configured the SQC alarm properly, just go ahead and choose Finish. And at that point, we will go ahead and create that alarm tag plus all the other tags that were associated with that alarm, the status tag, the reset tag, etc. So uh, now this alarm was just created. Let's take a look at an alarm that's been around for a while. Uh, here's an alarm that I created the other day. And if you notice, when I do a right mouse click on this, there's a number of things that we can do with this alarm. Uh, for example, of course, I can edit it, but you can also edit the control limits. So right here, my, con my current control limits here, 50.94, 49.99, etc. Uh, if I'd like to make this a little bit broader, I can go ahead and do that. Uh, so if I've learned from experience that this really needs to be, uh, let's go with 51.1. Uh, and this will stay 49.99. I really don't need to edit that. We'll go here with uh, 59. Excuse me, how about if we go with uh, 48.9. Then at this point, I've now introduced into the pi tags that are storing those control limits, I've introduced new values. And these new values are going to be reflected in the SQC alarm trends in process book. So I can edit the control limits from here. I can also clear and restart these SQC alarms, place the alarm in hold, or put it in normal operation. If you recall, that was the behavior that is controlled by the reset tag. That reset tag has a value of 0, 1, and 2. It's a digital value itself, and this is the client application that manipulates it. And finally, if I do decide to delete this tag, I can choose Delete, and I'll be prompted for all the tags associated with this tag that I would like to also delete. In fact, in this case, I, I don't want to delete any of these, so I'll go ahead and cancel. But that's how we would handle the alarms uh, themselves and the tags that were configured to support those alarms. Now, the big finish to this entire exercise is to take that alarm that I just created and to create an SQC trend that makes use of that real-time SQC alarm. So what I just did is I clicked on the SQC button, I clicked and drag open a bounding box, and this brings up the dialog for my SQC chart. Again, let me demonstrate. I'll click here, click and drag open. Now at this point I need to, well traditionally I'd go out and choose an input tag uh, if, if it were a chart of individuals, but in fact what I'm going to look for here is my SQC tag that I just created. I'll do a tag search. I look for all the tags that begin with the letter Q, or excuse me, that have the point source Q. These are the SQC tags. And here is the tag that has been running for a while. Now, there's an interesting thing that just happened when I selected that tag. The client interrogated the server to determine what type of tag this was. And because it was an SQC tag, you'll notice that things like the sample size, the data filter, those are things that really cannot be changed from here. Again, those are the things that are being controlled on the server side. Now, the control parameters, of course, we can. And you're seeing, or you're recognizing here, the control limits that are currently in place. Now, I can, of course, control the formatting and what I look at. So, for example, if I'd like to see centerline plus four sigma, I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll go with, let's go with one that's going to update in real time. We'll go with one hour. And I'll go ahead and say OK. There we go. If you notice, do you recall I changed the alarm limits a little bit earlier? I changed the control limits, I should say. And you can see, you can reflect that change in control limits over here. I zoom in, you can see the control limit change historically.